Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Good Shepherd Episcopal Church here in Wailuku, Maui. This is our 7 o'clock a.m. virtual liturgy of the Word for October 16th, 2022. It is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost proper 24. A couple of announcements before we begin our service. Uh, first of all, next week, Sunday, there will be a meeting for Sunday school teachers and potential Sunday school teachers after the nine o'clock service during the coffee hour. Also tomorrow, October 17th, we will have Jonathan Kutab here speaking in the church sanctuary at six o'clock p.m. He will be here to speak about the plight of the Palestinians in the Holy Land. Also, please remember that Chow Fun tickets, the monies are due back to the church on October 24th. And for those of you who would like to have deceased loved ones remembered for all saints, we must have the names by October the 26th. With that, we will begin this morning's service with the ringing of the bell. Oh, we 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, highest and, and peace to his people, people on earth. earth. Lord God, God, Heavenly King, King Almighty, Almighty God, God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only Son, Son of the Father, Father Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now for the reading of the lessons. The first reading is a reading from Genesis. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the fort of Jabal. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he, he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and humans, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose up upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 121. Lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. And he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. So that the sun shall not strike you by day. Nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in. From this time forth forevermore. A reading from 2 Timothy. As for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation. Through faith in Christ Jesus, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage 
with the utmost patience in teaching, for the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told the disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, the judge refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I'll grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says, and won't God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. How do we pray? And what do we pray for? Uh, the, the second letter of Paul to Timothy really unpacks a lot of that and teaches us a lot about that. Uh, prayer is not a wish list. 
God is not Santa Claus, you know, I'm, I'm praying for this uh, certain thing or I'm praying for this certain outcome. Uh, really any, any prayer that we offer should be an invocation of the Holy Spirit if we're going to ask for anything. So as we're going through our difficulties and our struggles, we pray for the Holy Spirit to be with us, which that, that, that notion seems to make a lot more sense to me in terms of why don't I get what I want from my prayers? Um, why did I, uh, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and yet my friend James's son Paul died at 32 years of age from um, PTSD. Uh, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and my friend Karina died of cancer. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and my mom died of cancer. Uh, instead, maybe the prayer should be, uh, please Holy Spirit come and be with me while I go through these challenges. Um, some of which may be the result of uh, different people's free wills. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. But I, I also think that prayer ultimately is a time for us to express our sorrow, our joy, our gratitude, our concerns, uh, and to be in relationship with God, uh, which is, which is, really the the sad part about the gospel story today and the the judge and the widow who the judge didn't want to be in relationship with anybody um but you know gave in to the widow because um you know he wanted to be left alone so a lot of us will say that uh, this, this gospel story is about persistence uh, and that we have to keep asking and asking and asking and asking and asking and asking for what we want and because God gets so irritated with us for uh, not leaving God alone that God will give us what we want. Um, I, think if, I think if this story is about persistence, then the thing that we need to be persistent about is our prayer, our sharing, our sorrows, our joys, our gratitude, our concerns, and to be persistent in that rather than being persistent about our wish list, uh, bearing in mind that any prayer that we uh, invoke if we're going to ask for something should be in alignment with God's will for us and that's why we say thy will be done. It's thy will not mine be done. Um, a lot of people will say and I tend to agree that this story uh, in the gospel this morning is not about persistence but it's about justice. The widow is seeking justice. She's seeking the thing that is going to put her in alignment with God and those things, those people around her in alignment with God. And um, of course, uh, if you look at the parable carefully, the, the conclusion that you will probably come to, like the conclusion that I came to, is that the the judge is like God and the widow is like us and you know we be persistent and we be persistent and we seek justice and we seek justice. I wonder what it would be like if we turned the tables and we said we're like the judge and the widow is like God constantly knocking at our door begging for us to be in relationship with God and because of the hardness of our heart we don't want to answer. Uh, when we look at it that way it puts a different spin on it doesn't it? What if, what if the widow 
is God constantly banging on our door, begging us to be in relationship with God? And how does that manifest in, in our lives? Um, what, what are the things that uh, bring us to our knees and turn to prayer in God, to uh, turn in prayer to God? Uh, and then, then those hardships and things like that, uh, while they are not the will of God, um, I don't think it was the will of God for my f my friend James's son Paul to die of PTSD at uh, 32. I don't think it was the will of God for my friend Karina to undergo terrible suffering and for her mother to lose her only child. Um, I don't think it was the will of God for my mother to suffer the way she did, but it is the will of God for us to find meaning in all of that and to draw nearer to God, uh, who is like that widow who, compl who continually bangs on the door asking us to open and answer and be in relationship with God so that God can enter into all that suffering and be with us, weep with us, and ultimately be a spiritual bomb of healing, bomb, B-A-L-M, not B-O-M-B, -B, uh, of healing for all of us in our struggles. And I think um, that that's what's going to get us through these uh, challenges that we seem to be facing today, uh, COVID-19, um, uh, the possibility of war uh, because of what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. Uh, none of those things are the will of God, um, but pr possibly the result of our using our free will. Um, but what would the world be like if when God pounded on the door and said, let me in, let me in, let me into your heart, let me into your lives, uh, maybe the world will be different. Um, I think that uh, no matter what, if we let God in, uh, we'll be able to deal with uh, whatever comes our way uh, to just keep the focus on God at all times. And God is persistent and God does seek justice. Are you and I there to answer and open the door? Time will tell. And now we affirm our faith by reciting together the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We, we look, look for, for the, the resurrection, resurrection of the dead, dead and the and life, life of, of the, the world, world to come. come. Amen. Amen. And now we'll have the prayers of the people. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for Iglesia de la Región Central de America. In our diocese, we pray for clergy widows, Mrs. Patty Browning, Mrs. Delia D. Chang, Mrs. Eloise Conley, Mrs. Margaret Cromwell, Mrs. Marcia Detwheeler, Mrs. Ululani Duncan, Mrs. Claude Dutil, Mrs. Charlotte Holmes, Mrs. Myrtle Canisiro, Mrs. Rebecca Kennedy, Mrs. Anapesi Langi, 
Mrs. Belquis Lawn, Mrs. Grace Lee, Mrs. Fane Lino, Mrs. Barbara Longo, Mrs. Priscilla Millen, Mrs. Nancy Minuth, Mrs. Dottie Moore, Mrs. Kathleen Owings, Mrs. Mary Catherine K. Paisley, Mrs. Eugenia Park, Mrs. Joe Piltz, Mrs. Louisa Quintero, Mrs. Paula Rudinoff, Mrs. Florence Sasaki, Mrs. Roxanne Shoemaker, Mrs. Charlesta Snyder, Mrs. Marilyn Snyder, Mrs. Clarita Tabili, Mrs. Tina Urban, Mrs. Ernestina Williams Van Coolen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name be glorified by all people. We pray for our bishops, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and Bob, our bishop, all priests, especially Moki, our priest, and all deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Joseph, our president, David, our governor, Gail, our senator, Mike, our mayor, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Remembering especially this week, Macario E. Dica, Kenneth P. Lee, give it to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Remembering especially this week, Vida Dutton Scudder, Philip, Edith Cavell, Samuel Isaac Joseph, Sherasevsky, and Channing, Moore Williams, Teresa of Avila, Hugh Latimer, and Nicholas Ridley, and Thomas Cranmer, Ignatius of Antioch. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.